So we were talking about the power of habits, right? And how they really impact our happiness. That if we could harness our habits, we could figure out how to form better, good habits, these behaviors that we want. And if we knew how to hack our habits, we could thwart the old bad habits and get rid of them. But how can we figure out how to do this? Well, we can through our psych pro tips. Yay. And so psych pro tip number one is that if you want to do a behavior, and especially if it's rewarding, just find a very consistent cue, right? Cues are best when they're consistent over time, when it's something easy for you to see. This can be a person, this can be doing an activity that you really want to do at a particular time of day in a particular place. You can even come up with a ritual, right? You know, you see your particular, like, I don't know, bracelet or like some like little statuette or something that you have in your room that you make and you put there and you're like, oh, I see that and then I do the thing. Our brain is really stupid at picking up on cues. It really wants them. So if you give it any kind of cue information, it's going to latch on to it. That's the power of the habit loop. Anytime you get a cue and you have the reward at the end, you're going to make the routine a little bit more automatic. Um, but a second psych pro tip is that you can use the habit routines that already exist and fit in other things, right? There are habits that you already have. Think brushing your teeth, right? Where if you wanted to do something good, you could just stick it at the end and add like one more step to the routine and it becomes even easier. You can like use the habits you already have to do better stuff. And researchers have found that this is really powerful. Judah et al. was really interested in having people form the healthy habit of flossing, which not a lot of us do. And so they tested, well, maybe people would floss more if they tried to do it at the end of brushing their teeth. So the routine would be like, brush your teeth, and then you just stick in the flossing. And so they, had, they tested this out in two different conditions. First, they had some people floss before brushing, which meant there's no cue. You just have to like remember to floss, right? Or you floss after brushing, where it's like, you know, you have some cue, it's morning, you brush, and then you just add the flossing to the end. And eight months later, the question is, which worked better? So this is like a really long-term study. And here's what they find. If you, all these people learned about the power of flossing and how important it was, but when you stick the flossing at the end, when you have this consistent cue, like nearly like, you know, twice to three times the number of people are doing this better. So like pick a habit you already have and stick the good thing at the end. Every time you watch, you get in your like TikTok video watching mode at the end, be like, now's when I do my three minute meditation or now's when I like text a friend to be social, right? So hack it at the end. But even better is if it's a particularly bad habit you want to get rid of, you can keep the cue and the reward, right? So there's a reward there, but you kind of switch up the routine. What does this look like in the context of the habit loop? Well, let's say you have your cue, your phone dings, your routine is you look at it and you get the reward of like, you know, you've kind of satisfied your curiosity, right? What if you stuck in a new routine? So now, you know, you're going around, your phone dings, you'd normally look at it, you say, ah, when my phone dings, this is when I think of some random act of kindness to do, or this is when I do a two minute meditation, or this is when I just take a couple deep breaths, right? You're hacking this existing habit loop and just sticking in a different routine, and you kind of benefit from the fact that the cue and this ending result already existed. Finally, you can use the rewards that you're a little bit too tempted by, maybe rewards that don't normally help out your happiness, but are very like cravy and tempty, and you can stick them in as an additional reward for something that you want to do. This is something that's re referred to as temptation bundling. Um, and it's the work of the uh, Wharton psychologist, Katie Milkman, who studied this directly. And here was the insight she had about temptation bundling, how she figured it out. She notes, you know, at the end of a long day, I really want to go to the gym, but I really struggle to get there. Even though I know I should go, it's going to affect my happiness. It would, I would get the after workout glow. It's just really hard to do, right? She also has a different struggle at the end of the day. At the end of the day, she wants to like goof off and watch her TV shows, like her favorite shows, but she knows that might not make her very happy either because she's supposed to get work done. And the insight was like, wait a minute, if I put these two together, if I added the reward of the TV to the workout, I could kind of combine this to solve both problems. And this is temptation bundling. You bundle a temptation, like something you find tempting, that's like the juicy extra to the thing that you're supposed to be doing. And so. Uh, how we define it is this is a strategy where you st restrict your access to certain rewards and you let yourself do them only when you're doing something else that's goal consistent, right? And so if you want to work out more, but you also are tempted to sit down and watch Netflix, you agree that you're only ever going to watch Netflix when you're at the gym. Katie did a lovely study on this that she calls the Hunger Games study, where she gave people, this was kind of the height of Hunger Games, she gave people an audio book of the Hunger Games, but they had to leave it at the gym so they could only listen to it when they went to the gym. And she found these huge extra rates of people going to the gym because they really wanted to see what was going to happen next 
uh, on Hunger Games. Um, and I use this strategy myself. Uh, I have an elliptical and I have like this really old computer where I have DVDs of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, best sitcom ever. I know it's from the 90s, but you should all watch it. And I only let myself watch Buffy when I'm on the elliptical. You'd be surprised how much more I hit the elliptical because of that. And so this is a way that we can hack our habits. If we understand the habit loop, we can use them for good to promote our happiness. Mm -hmm.